Hi guys, I'm Marie from Simply Card. I'm a kite surfing instructor and today I'm making you a favor by showing you some tips about the win window that I only show to my students. So let's dive into action right now. So normally I would be on the lake, on the frozen lake, teaching snow kite and I would explain that directly on the snow or I would be on the beach explaining that directly uh, in the sand. But I'm going to explain that on a whiteboard just like if I would be a teacher. So when you start kite surfing or snow kiting, the important thing to know is how you deal with the wind. So it's the first thing that you have to learn and that you have to learn in order to be able to manipulate your kite on the proper way. So the first thing, if you want to know where the wind is from, most of the time, if you go on a kite spot, you're going to see people like that. Yeah, and it looks really, it looks really weird but they're just listening at the wind. They're just gonna turn their head like that. The main thing they're gonna do is that they're gonna find where the wind is from. So that's the best way to find where the wind is from. Just listen with your ears. You're not gonna have flags on every kite spot you go. So you just turn your head until you have wind in both ears and that's where the wind comes from. And people are just like that with their hands because they're trying to feel the wind and when you're gonna get experience with kite surf, you're gonna know exactly what kite you need to take when you feel the wind. So you're just gonna say like, okay, I'll go with my 12 or ooh, okay, I'll go with my seven. Or you can also, if there's already people kiting on the spot, you just look at a, at a person that is like kind of the same size as you are and you take the kite, uh, that the same size of kite. So um, that's a good way as well, just copy others. So let's dive into the wind window. When it comes into kiting, you have the wind window. It's something that you just play with in every session without even noticing it, okay? So the wind window goes like this. It's like a rainbow. So when I'm teaching kite surf, I always say here is 12, here is one, here is two, and here is three. You have 11, 10, and nine. So that's like, that's just like a clock. So when you want to just stop your kite and it's not too windy, you bring your kite at 12. If it's really windy or just want to take a break, bring your kite at three or at nine. So it means that your kite is not moving anymore. When I feel like taking a break, I just bring slowly my kite at three or at nine and my kite is just gonna wait for me right there on the water and just go like a little bit up and down and it's not gonna pull at all. I wouldn't suggest to go at 12 if it's really, really windy. I did that when I was a total beginner and it was so dangerous, okay guys? Because when it's really windy, it's really gusty and when you bring your kite all the way up at 12, you may have some gusts that are going to push your kite really up and that's where you have an awesome kite fail video and you don't want to be in a kite fail video, okay? So you bring your kite at 12 when the, when the wind is not too strong, you're in total control and you have the right size for uh, your body. So that's where sometimes you're going to see people like kiters, they're talking on the on the kite spot and they just have their kite at 12 or maybe like around 1 or around 11 and they can they can just talk it's because their kite is not even pulling them so is that okay so ne next thing when you're kiting you're always going to bring your kite around this area or around this area so 130 or 1030 that's the place where you bring your kite okay and if you run out of wind you need to move your kite here, okay? You're gonna do loops like that. So that's gonna give you some power to keep going. So it, you're gonna, you're always gonna see kites going like that on the water if the wind is not so strong. You're gonna be able to guess if the person needs would need a bigger kite so that because they're just moving their kites up and down, up and down. That's the same thing here. You're just moving your kite up and down, up and down in order to generate power. <laughs> One of the biggest mistakes that people always do is that they buy a trainer kite and they're just like, oh yeah, cool, I'm buying a trainer kite and I'm gonna learn to kite surf by myself. And what they do with their kite is that they do big loops, they go from two, 10, two, 10. But guess what? We never do that when we kite surf. Can you imagine? I'm going to the right side like that and I bring my kite all the way to the other side, but my body is all aligned to go on the right. 
So it just doesn't work. So if you buy a trainer kite just to practice and have fun, I would suggest these things, okay? You're gonna bring your kite. You're gonna practice to keep your kite at 12 and then bring it slowly to two and go back to 12 but don't go further than 12. You, keep, you, you bring it to 12 and you bring it back at 2. 12 to 12. You do the same with 12, 10, 12, 10. You just practice like that with your kite, with your trainer. Or you can practice that with your kite as well if you go in the water. Super safe. You just go and you try to just control the kite. Don't go further than 12 on one side or the other. So just practice that. After that, when you have a good control of that, you just practice to keep your kite here, okay, around 10, 30, uh, so because that's where we hold the kite, when we kite. So you have to practice of just keeping it steady right there, and you don't move. And the same thing here. You bring it, you do 12, 2, 12, 2, and then whoop, you keep it at 2, or 2 and a half, or 1 and a half, sorry. So you just practice to bring your kite from a place to another and then keep it steady at one place. So that's how we manage our kite. And that's a good thing to practice because that's how we ride. We always ride by keeping our kite on one side or the other and at the same place. If you run out of wind, yes, you're going to do these little loops on one side or the other. But most of the time, if you have the right wind with the right size of kite, you're going to be fine. You just keep your kite right here. So kite surfing is that easy. Okay, no, it's a little bit more complicated than that. But one last thing that I need to tell you, guys, is like, it's here. This is, we call it the power zone. Zone, am I gonna write it well? Power zone. This spot is right in front of you and it's very dangerous, okay? Why people are doing face plant when they start kite surfing or snow kiting is because they're pulling too much on the bar and then the kite is gonna start like back stalling like that because you're pulling too much on the line so that the kite is just like, woo, let's go down. And then it's gonna go down right in front of you and then you're gonna have a nice big gust of wind and it's gonna go directly in your kite and that's where you make a face plant or a Superman jump, which can be quite dangerous, okay? So try to avoid that power zone, okay? This is dangerous. If your kite start flipping or doing whatever, uh, doing like some free stuff, just let go of the bar, let it go, uh, and your kite's gonna slowly come back here uh, on the side, okay? So that's what you need to do. Don't pull on the bar when it comes to the power zone. There is one moment when we use the power zone is when the wind is very, very light, okay? If it's very light, we use the power zone to generate power. So instead of launching our kite, so if you're on the water, your kite is down there, it's just gonna go up like that or up like that. But if it's really light wind, and I can tell you it's light wind, we bring the kite here and we're gonna pull on the middle lines and just uh, so it's going to generate, uh, it's going to generate power and the kite's going to go up like that because it's going to go in the power zone. It's going to go like, whoosh, and, but it's not going to go so quickly because the wind is light. If you do that, when, when the wind is way too strong, it's dangerous. It's not a method that you want to use. Okay. So that's about it guys. So that's the wind window. It's something that you use on every single ride that you're going to be. And it's something that you need to keep in mind all the time. And uh, it's sometimes going to tell people about it. Like, I, oh, I brought the kite on the side of the wind window at 9 or at 3. And I was just chilling. Or, oh, I could keep the kite right there. Or I had to move it because I, I didn't have enough power. So it's kind of conversations that you're going to hear on the kite spot. So you're going to be super cool. And you can bring your awesome knowledge on the kite spot now, guys. So that's the first lesson that I teach to everyone that wanna learn how to kite surf. You need to know everything about the wind window and then you're good to take a trainer kite and start practicing. Don't go and do these big loops, okay? That's a reflex that everybody has. So take care guys, I really hope you enjoyed that video. Please give me some likes, some comments, share that video. Don't hesitate to give me in the comments 
some topics that you'd like to hear about. Uh, it would be really a pleasure to, uh, to talk about it. And um, it's going to be a real pleasure to show you some videos about snow kiting, kite surfing, and give you some uh, awesome knowledge about that awesome sport. And uh, don't forget to subscribe, click on that little bell, and uh, get notification when I post a new video, okay? So take care and have a really good day. Ciao!